I am unashamed. What about you? You gotta remember, I've been hanging out with the yuppies for about a week. So coming home. <laughs> yeah, you've been eating at restaurants and all that, man. That we did eat at a cool restaurant. It was, uh, I told you, uh, what was it called? The Oasis. The Oasis. It's on Lake Travis. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're up. I've been there they built a building like, I don't know, 100 feet up. And you're overlooking this lake. It's kind of, I mean, it was pretty good food. Yeah. But it's not home. And so it, it's been, it's been yuppieville. And so when I, I came down here yesterday, Phil said, I got a jambalaya. Of course, it's like its own thing. It's like more than a food. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's like Phil, a whole meal in, in a dish, I guess. Yeah. But it's not like when he says, I got a jambalaya, it's like I went to the store and, you know, bought a new gun. <laughs> <laughs> you, no. you know what I mean? It, it's you hate to even put it within. So I need to learn. It's a it's a, it's a two hour. <clears throat> uh, you get up at at six thirty seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I was wondering what you were going to say. <laughs> well, I was too. He was, he was so you, sure. <laughs> you and you look around. What's today? And you, and you, Miss Kay informed me that today I had promised a jambalaya. So just remember this, Jace. I, I need to learn how a, to do this. There's a sequence of events that must be adhered to to the letter. <laughs> now, you can think uh, who who are the New Orleans chefs, the ones that came up here, the Wish or Fol you got uh, Bess, Fol Folts, Folts. either one of them, either one of them. So they're kind of the catalyst that these great dishes come from because mm -hmm. they're very good at what they do. And I looked at both of them's recipes, and I said, hmm. So you take two pounds of bacon. I like where this is starting. I didn't two, even realize bacon yeah, was in there. That's yeah, where you two, start. Two, two full packs. Two pounds? Yeah. You take them out of the wrappers, and you put them on a, on a cutting board, Jace. And look, you're cutting them in pieces about like this. Look. So you got the bacon. It's all together, you know, like they put them in a the pack. You take the wrappings off of them. You put oh, them you just start cutting it in little yeah, pieces. Yeah. So you, you cut those up, but you don't put them anywhere. You just leave them in a bowl. You just cut them up about this far. So you make about... And it's not cooked. Not cooked. Okay. So you have the bacon cut up two packs, and it's in a bowl. You set that over there. All right. You take a couple of packs of Savoie, Savoie sausage. Well, it's, it's or whatever. <laughs> you like Savoie. It's, I it's, like this local it's link, guy. link sausage. Huh. <clears throat> I didn't go with the heat. McCain. You like McCain. McCain. I didn't go with yeah. the hot. I just went with the mild on Dewey. I got two packs of that. All right, so I would I'm go hot. <laughs> and you're cutting up the sausage about this thick. Oh, okay. I got yep. that. You know, not less little less than a For quarter. For those inch. of you listening, um, that was about a inch. No, not an inch. No, it's just that's about, what you showed an inch. Yep, yeah. With the, I, I was looking like, I, so I like a quarter inch. inch or less. Oh, okay. So you I cut like that, that. That's in a bowl. <laughs> okay. You got, got three it. sausage and then three in another pack. That's six sausage. You cut them up, put them in All a bowl. Right. So, set so far them we up. got bacon and sausage. So this is a <clears> port, bacon and sausage. Port heavy jambalaya. Then you come out and you got one pack, a pound of just uh, ground sausage. Owens makes a good good sausage. Owen, really? Owens sausage. Yeah. And Do you I went, get the hot? I went with mild. If you want your jambalaya oh. spiked up a little heat, you yeah, know, okay. some of the women, ooh, this is hot. But <laughs> but you can always add some heat if you want to, but I, I just took mild. Okay. So that's the third package of meat. All, all start, pork so far. All pork, and you set that over there. All right. It's just there. You're going to chop it up with your spatula once you get it in there. But you put that over there. The fourth kind of meat is chicken thighs. Really? You need to take the skin off of them. You, right. you By can, the way, you they can have get them skinless. Them, you can get skinless if you want to yeah. and boneless. But these had the skin and the bone on them, so I just worked the bone out and uh, you just pull the skin pretty well. Pull it's the, the skin best off. piece of a chicken and is look, the thigh. No the, you just put them there about three licks with a knife, turn them. And just okay. chunk them. They're just chunk. So just chicken chunks. You got it. Okay. I'm with you so far. So you got that. You got that sitting over so there. So now we got something besides pork. Yeah. Gotta, so all your meat is sitting there. You got a big iron. But I noticed you had some shrimp in there. Uh, you're way away from that. Uh. 
That's not <laughs> okay. Sequence of events. Don't, don't, you don't say rush, get your meats don't cut rush out. It, Jay. Sorry, so you, I thought we were going. So meat. you got bacon, you got chicken thighs, you've got link sausage, okay. and you've got a pack of ground sausage. That's the that's the whole the, pack of ground sausage. Whole pack. So Gee, you set that over there. Remember, you're going like to have, have a. Yeah, it's a pound. pound of, yeah. You're going to have to have a, a iron pot. That uh, I might have an well, iron stomach. I didn't realize quart, all this was in there. You know, yeah, ten <laughs> ten quart minimum, ten or twelve quart. You know, big iron skillet, and uh, it needs to be. You need to get it all seasoned and everything else. It takes you know when you buy. I, it, I got that. I put got a little feel grease. Like, put it on you're a hot fire. You're telling them this is me. Just yeah. forget them. So you got I, your I meat. Make this. So I you have got your pot. Right. Well, now we turn to veggies. What kind of veggies are we gonna put in this jambalaya? I'm gonna guess. Onion, four large onions, garlic. You can or cannot. Oh, you don't I, use the garlic. I didn't put garlic in there, but right, you don't let have. me interrupt you. Then onion, bell pepper. I know one bell pepper. Celery, three to four sticks. So what's the fourth one? Onion, bell pepper, celery. I would have thought garlic and garlic, but I left garlic out. <laughs> Some of them put oh, garlic. Garlic in was. It. The one. Oh, it's <laughs> optional. I put a little garlic, a little, little garlic bit. powder. At some point, and I put a little garlic powder in there. It's amazing I, that I named those four. But if you want to yeah, go with uh, you want to go with garlic, fine. But okay. I, on that one yesterday, I didn't put garlic. But I did have That's the, celery, the bell pepper, Trinity. and onions. Plus one. You you chop them up, mm -hmm. chop them up. Not just small, small, but just medium. Pre but that's preference. So preference. you got the onions by themselves in that bowl. Four onions. No, four onions, one bell pepper. Not mixed with the other veggies. <laughs> you got the four onions. Then you got the bell pepper and celery. That's mixed together. Oh, well, you on. got that sitting there. <laughs> is there any? This is prep. prep. I know, but why is the onion separate? Yeah, what the, the, it's very specific on there. Right now, just say, just get it in your head. <laughs> Keep the onions separate. <laughs> Put the onions in one bowl, and you have the There's other. There's no veggies. reason. They oh, just but I want to know why. <laughs> I, I'm fixing to tell you why. <laughs> okay. So you get them all. You get that over there. So you got that. Oh, then you got goodness. various seasoning. You'll have a quart. We have. We can our own. We can our own tomatoes, fresh tomatoes. So I have a quart of that sitting there. I had no idea there were tomatoes in that. Well, that's why I'm why I'm telling you. Why not? I'm 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 unwrapping. The, yeah. uh, uh, the 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 uh, a great world into a jambalaya that's good. Yeah, no. so so, so let, you got so your just, you got your meats. Well, let me let me just hold up. So if somebody didn't have your own canned tomatoes, which are amazing, well, right, would they just use like a can of tomatoes? Canned tomatoes. Okay, All right. a lot better if you can your own. Yeah. Well, obviously, I'm okay. just saying because now. Fresh. So how many? How much are we talking about on the canned tomatoes? A quart. It's a quart, which would probably be two cans. You're going to use. You're okay. you're going to pour that in there, and I leave about that much for some reason. I don't quite use the whole quart. I just stop about right here. <laughs> but you eat don't that know later. why. <laughs> yeah. So you got all that ready. So it just you, looks right. Not to look. Everybody that is a cook, when they fry bacon from time to time, they they have take the bacon out of it, and you have some bacon grease. Yeah, okay. So it. you put that in a little canister on the on the stove. We Love keep it. bacon grease. Love it. So I, you got everything ready now. And then you have, in this case, eight cups of rice. Yeah. And I used about five cans. And you, I could have done it with the, with the, the, the bones out of the chicken, made my own broth. But I said, I'll just go with chicken broth in a can. You got two cups in a can of chicken broth, two cups. Mm -hmm. So you have five cans, two, four, six, eight, ten cups of fluid. It's broth. It's not water. It's broth. Right. Chicken broth. Flavor. 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 <laughs> yeah. So you have that there. So you're Ready saying when you make, oh, so you cook the rice in the chicken broth. Way before that, you're getting ahead of yourself. You've <laughs> no, got I'm all not. your ingredients. You have your meats. You got your veggies cut up. Right. You got the chicken broth ready and the tomatoes, and they're on a table right beside your stove. Turn the fire on the stove or under the big pot, wide open. Okay. You reach over and you 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 bacon, uh, bacon grease. Your bacon grease, and I took out about a. A little spatula. I'm saying probably teaspoon. Four, no, I'd say four tablespoons. Oh, pretty good bit. You covered the bottom of your pot. Yeah, pretty good. Well, you dump your bacon in. That first meat goes in. The bacon goes in. You got your fire pretty high. So it's three frying. quarter. It's frying. Yeah, it's frying. Three quarter high. You got a heavy spatula, not one that will bend. Well, right. I know that. Some people use boat paddles. Boat paddle. 
whatever. Like a mini boat. For the, that's right. For the big ones. Yeah. So you got a thick spatula. Well, there's your bacon, and it's frying. You just stir it around, and when that starts to brown, when it's when your bacon is ready, okay, you, you just take your sausage. Any of them. You can take the link sockets first, throw them over in there. You, uh, you can well, you take need to the brown chicken, all the chicken meat. thighs if you want to. Salt, black pepper, your chicken thighs a little bit. Not a okay. whole lot. But you put one meat at a time yep. in that pot. Got it. You got bacon. Then here comes the sausage pound the of sausage. sausage. That's in there. Okay. Chicken it, thighs. You gotta just got chop it. it up. It's browning. When it gets golden brown. Okay. Throw your chicken in. Throw your link sausage in. All right, we Keep got stirring. it. We got it. You're gonna cook on that that meat part. Uh, if you added it up, I'm saying, oh, 15 or 20 minutes. You're well, until they're brown. Everything gets brown. We got it. When you get it all brown, onions go first. Onions only. Dump the four onions that you've cut up. Okay. Dump them over They've in the meat. They've been set aside. Yeah. They're separate apart. The onions hit the meat. You stir them around a little bit because you may to try to stick a little on the Do bottom. Do you like brown the onions? Is that what you're doing? Nope. You're, you're letting your onions cook. In with all the meats. Oh, so you got to so, be in with the meat. Yeah, so you sit there. I'm saying on the onions, you you let them stay in the meat until they soften. You got to get soft. Right. As soon as they, they, they soften. Clear, they clear up. Okay. The crunch is gone. I'm going to say probably 10 or 12 minutes, mm -hmm. 10 or 12 minutes, your onions will begin I'll to. I'll figure that. I got that. So you got that. The next thing, bell pepper and yep. your celery. Put yep. that in there. And Stir maybe it around garlic a bit. if you want some. Turn your fire down just a hair, about medium, a little more, okay. and you're letting your veggies cook. You've already got the onions in 12 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. They've cleared up. Put your bell pepper and celery in. Mm -hmm. You stir them around. Wait till they get done. Got it. When they get done, uh, what were the other? What were the other? Oh, uh, here, chicken. Tomato. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, your tomatoes. Take uh, your tomatoes, yeah. your quarter tomatoes, dump. But not quite. You just leave shy a little of bit. a quart. <laughs> yeah. Everything kind of cools down, but you bring it back, and it begins to just so cook. Funny. Yeah, now the look, whole thing. Look. Now, where's the rice at? Now, here's the, the deal. You've got your meats and your veggies, and they've been seasoned a little bit, mm -hmm. and you say you can add, uh, uh, like, blackened, crappy seasoning, a little bit of that. You know, I put in some of my seeds, you know, Bear Terrier Bay. It's got a little... Barbecue flavor, a little that, a little sketchy, that sketchy one, you know that Jay puts on the steaks. I yeah. put a little of that. I'm not overdoing it with the season. I'm yeah, just, it's not highly seasoned. No, I'm, yeah. I'm just putting just a little for flavor there. Okay. So you have all your meats there now. now where's the rice? You have all your veggies. Okay. I'm, I'm getting there. All, right. all your veggies, <laughs> and you've got your tomatoes. It's sitting there cooking. All right. You could cook that for 35, 40 minutes on a low heat, and you could put that. On, on one of these shoes, and it would be good. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is you could put that particular d dish over spaghetti and eat yeah. it then. Oh, yeah. You could put it put it on rice and eat it. But, since but this Zach, is a jambalaya. But since Zach, what I noticed is, is when Zach was the guest, you know, he started telling, telling us, because he moved to North Carolina, and I know why he left. He started saying the two things we shouldn't be eating, butter and rice. And so Phil's response was to go make a jambalaya. I noticed as soon as he left, Chase, remember this, you took his advice. Remember this sentence. Uh, Ignorance is a dangerous thing. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm, I'm 74 years old. I'm six foot three, 175 pounds. I weigh what I'm supposed to weigh. And if you can't get in the door, get off the rice and the butter. But if you're coming through the door all right, you're still jumping around in your vehicle going on four wheelers, you're saying, that old dude's just still rolling pretty good. Well, you know, I, you say, well, watch the butter. Right, Mark. Yeah, I understand. You just so, got to keep moving. So hang on. Let's take a break before you tell us about the rice. So, I, you know, the lair where we're uh, doing our unashamed podcast now is right at the the front at the beginning of our property and which is combined what do we what is it now is it 1500 1800 but i of, think willie owns this doesn't he yeah i think he actually owns this <laughs> yeah. oh but no as long as it was yeah. robertson i didn't well, don't care. tell him that i want to start paying him rent but yeah. so what one of the things i've loved about it is that y'all just bought some new property is that property i mean to own for us is to hunt but i mean everybody has different reasons but it's just part of the the big part about the american dream i don't you know about oh, it is it, it is i mean you know especially people i think about these people cooped up in cities you know and, and you don't own any you're just in an apartment yeah. i mean that would be 
terrible Remember to that me. movie, Far and Away, Land. It was all about land. That's right. Owning Everybody came here from Europe. They were like, we need land. We got to go. Yeah. So one of our sponsors, uh, Capital Ranch Real Estate, this is what they're about. And, of course, what better place in Texas, which, you know, is big and wide open and, mm. and free, which is really good. Uh, Cody Maxwell is the owner, good guy, and uh, has some good visits with him. So basically, his company helps you buy or sell ranches in Texas. So a lot of people are coming there from other places. So we want to, you guys to check them out. Uh, you can call them, 855-968-1200. That's 855-968-1200 if you're interested. Or you can go to ranchrealestate.com. So if you're interested in ranches in Texas, give these guys a call. So you got everything in this thing. And that pot's cooking, and it's, mm -hmm. you're letting that cook, all your veggies with your tomatoes. I'd go about 12, 15 minutes, just let it sit there and simmer. Make sure it's not sticking. You, 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 yeah. you, you always stir, got that stir big spatula. Stir 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 you casing. roll it. You roll it. You make sure nothing's sticking. We got it. Well, you got that. So the th only two things left, except the shrimp and all, already have ready about two pounds of shrimp that you've peeled. peeled. Yeah. You got the shrimp there. And in the shrimp, I took two racks of green onions, cut the ends of them off. Green onions and look, shrimp. And you got two racks of green onion mm -hmm. with shrimp in a bowl. That's the last thing that goes in. So you got that last. Now, do you have you cooked these? I've already, I've already. No, 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 no. Yeah. All I've done is peel them. So I've got that ready as the last thing you put in the jambalaya. Okay. Because it doesn't take long. And you don't want to overcook. You do a dump and you don't go back. Right. When you put the shrimp yeah. in. It's over. The cooking is over. Then you just let it rest for 30 minutes. But anyway, you got it all in well, the pot. Well, how did the shrimp cook? They cook, they cook in there. They, they cook in cook the jambalaya. Well, the 30 yeah. minutes. Jambalaya's hot. The well, you said let it rest. So, I, it, so it, you got it's, everything it's in there. The where I stopped while ago is you're, it's time for the rice. I've got it already measured out, eight cups in this particular case. I poured that rice over in there. There's fluid that's cooked out of the veggies yeah, and the and the you started with the bacon. The There's a certain amount of fluid. The tomatoes, <clears throat> you got a couple of cups. You probably got two to three cups of fluid in yeah. there. I'm going to back that up when the eight cups of rice go in there with two, four, six, eight, ten, okay. ten cups of, the broth. of chicken broth. Okay. I got a lot of rice here, so I put that all in there, and it it it, it simmers down. But I want to bring that back to a. About a half throttle on your, a little more than half, maybe just a half on your on your gas. Electric stove, don't even try it. No <laughs> gas. You better get out. You of just it. eliminated. Boy, you eliminated a lot of people. Eighty percent. Electric stove, you're out. You're in the yuppieville. You're not gonna have good cooking. So you get all that. Well, once that water starts to bubble and all that, you make sure it's not sticking, and you bring that to a boil. Half throttle or a little less. Once that begins to boil, you say, okay, lid time. You got everything in that jambalaya, but, but two things, the green onions and the shrimp. Oh, the rice is cooking in with all that? Yeah. That is correct. correct. Oh, I didn't realize that. So the rice, instead of putting it on rice, you're putting the rice in it. Yeah. This, by the way, this dish came from Africa, yep. and when they come over, you know, a lot of the slave trade and all that, what came out of that, well, they, 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 they knew had to really spike up a pot of rice. They'd kill some varmint cut him up, brown him a little bit. You know, they didn't have, like, bacon. And, uh, they, I had it in Liberia. It's called uh, Jolie, I think Jolie it's rice. It's an African-based yeah. dish. It's it's jumbo. Really? It's our jumbo. I, Thank the Lord the Africans knew how to cook that. But anyway, you got all that is simmering. Now we're down to the every three-minute stage. Now, I, I choose to do this. Some of the chefs would laugh, but that's all right. I make a good jambalaya. I'm using basically their recipes, but the way I do it, you got to watch rice because you'll scorch it on the bottom. Yep, all right. So when you get all that, everything together except the shrimp and the onions, I put a lid on that. I got the fire on about oh low to low medium, not like a simmer, but but you know about like this much <laughs> gas. So I've got that, and I'm watching the clock. I'm sitting at my table drinking a glass of tea, and I'm watching the clock every three minutes. Every three minutes. For eight to ten times every three minutes, you take that spatula, and when that, when you, all right, it started out at, you know, 9.20 in the morning. At 9.23, you're like, 
you get that lid off, and I go down with the spatula. A lot of fluid still there. It's bubbling. I rake the bottom, and I run. You'll see a, sometime a little brown on the bottom. No problem. <laughs> but yeah. if you wait eight minutes, it'll be Scorch. black on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. So every three minutes, I roll that, put the lid back on it, and I sit down, drinking my tea. Three <laughs> minutes passes. I get up, and I notice <laughs> that I'm looking, <laughs> and all that fluid from the cans of chicken broth, yeah. it's beginning to disappear. It's beginning to turn just to all rice. Right. Yeah. So you roll it again. You sit down again. Eight or ten times later, you take a little... The water's sp- evaporating. The water is... The rice is it's pulling the water up. inside mm. itself. The rice is sucking the water, the fluid mm-hmm. up. So that's why you got such flavor. Think about all that. Oh, yeah. All that flavor from the veggies mm-hmm. and the meats is going into the rice. Correct. Rice is a bland grain. Right. Yeah. This is the way to kick up a pot of rice. So after about eight or ten times, I roll it. I have a tablespoon, and I check that rice to make sure the rice is not crunchy in the middle. Oh, right. You want it fluffy. So when your rice gets fluffy, fluffy I'm guessing rice. 30 minutes of rolling every three minutes, that's about mm-hmm. 10 rolls. No problem. And so there, what, from start what, to finish, two whatever hours. Whatever carbs you're going to attain from the rice, <laughs> you spend 30 minutes. <laughs> you're working it, hard. Yeah. I mean, so you're, you're you, know, you get it down, yeah. and when your rice is fluffy on about that eighth or ninth or tenth time when you're rolling it, when your rice is fluffy, you say, no granny, it's, 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 it's good. I don't like a dry jambalaya. No. A lot of people, the rice separates. I want it a little moist. A little, a little moist. moist. A little moist, yeah. like yesterday. Yeah. So you go in there, and the last turn, you look at it, you, you check the rice, you say, rice is done. So you dump two pounds of shrimp and the green onions, Roll that in your jambalaya a couple of times, mm-hmm. three times. Make sure it's not sticking. Put a lid on it. And I'll sit there, and you go three more minutes. After that last three minutes, turn the fire out. Leave your lid on. Never look at that. Never say, I wonder what we got. No. <laughs> Somebody walks in and says, what you got in the pot? I would give away that pot. <laughs> because if they let that lid off, there goes yeah. your heat. Yeah. So you want your heat. You want your jambalaya. To and just you want sit there. The shrimp to cook. The shrimp to cook. It just, it's just three minutes. You turn the fire out, and you let it sit there, the jambalaya, for 30 minutes. Just let it sit there. Mm-hmm. Make whatever sides you want for the meal coming up, because this is a good one. And after about 30 minutes, walk in. No, your, we your just, rice yesterday is, we just Your ate. rice is fluffy, and everybody that eats it says, that has got to be. Gee whiz, the, I didn't. I thought you were going to tell me in like so less look, than a minute. So look, yeah, yeah, really. Look, no, I this two is hour, actually a podcast. Two hour about... ordeal. Prepping, yeah. add the turning, the rolling, the boiling, the add. The, you say two hours later, you're ready to go. So, it so it's does, ready in two hours. It does take two hours out of your life. But oh, what it's... better way to spend two hours than have a fine big jet? So how life? many how many would that feed? What that what 20, you just laid out? Twenty people. Twenty. Or if it's just you and mom, you like in our case, now it's down to nothing. It's gone. It lasted two days. Yep. The the second day, it's better than it was the first day because the flavors have come together. Yeah. Right. So when you get up, what we do is we eat as much as we can on Monday. If I did it on Monday, <laughs> and the next day Tuesday. <laughs> After we ate it, we bag it, put it in the fridge. Oh, yeah. We bag it, plastic bag. We get out, and then a lot of them just put it in the microwave, warm it up, warm or they up. put it back in so a pot. So what did the singer, what did Jep's buddy, the Rat Walker? Oh, South Carolina. He looked at us and said, that has got to be <laughs> the best thing I've ever tasted in my life. How in the oh, world did you fantastic. make that concoction? I said, a couple hours of your time. So the good so news that's is. That's just one, one <laughs> mit, 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 and thank, thank God we have the Cajun people south of us, that we learn most of this but from. But you're, you're this right. This K is half Cajun, so you don't want a full-blooded one. About half. <laughs> and, and you got one. You know, White yeah. boots, full blood. Yeah. <laughs> the shrimp, and we dude. got a lot of white boots that watch A lot of show. white boots. I love them white boots. So They, they know how to fish, and they know yeah, how to hunt. That's exactly right. But you can't understand a word they say. No. 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 It, it, my theory yeah. is, is because it's bad English and bad French together, which yeah. just makes for... Basically, I, y'all's I'm, mother is from her all of her <laughs> kinfolks, Oliers. They're all from Bro Bridge, Louisiana. Yep. So mm-hmm. we got just enough bloodline, y'all do, in you to make you great. You got about 
Yeah. You got enough Cajun, redneck, and Cajun together. Think about it. That's oh, the best. That of, is a human it's being. It's the best what of I, both worlds. What I've always said about the Cajun world is it's like Psy. Si. They're the only people on the planet that if you close your eyes and listen to them, you'll think they're drunk. <laughs> Whether they've been drinking or not. And a lot they of them may have, be, and a lot of them have been. Well, they have been, but like Psy. Si, People all the time like, what's wrong? Because you, if you just don't look at him, my take, close your eyes, you're my like, take he, on our, he's our high South as a Louisiana cop. brothers is they are the salt of the earth. They're fantastic. Oh, I love them to death. Uh, they can cook. I don't care what anybody says. Well, that oh, that bunch yeah. coming from New Orleans all the way across the Lake Charles. Say what you will, they can cook. Well, look, anybody around the world they put me to shame. Has by come the way. to South Louisiana. That's the first thing they say is how great the food is. They put me to shame. Us. And the invent and the invention of food. Yeah. Just think about. I mean, who's the first guy? I guarantee you, a Cajun looked at an oyster and said, "Ooh, <laughs> we eat that." <laughs> well, know. who was the and, first guy that looked into a crawfish hole and said, "Now that no. looks like that'd be good to eat." <laughs> Crustacean. Yeah. All right, let's take another break. So one of the things that uh, people have to look out for in this world, has always been this way, is um, people like to steal other people's stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, thieving's been around a long time. When you that's say that, with us, that's been with us from the beginning. From the beginning, that's exactly right. And of course, criminals, you know, get a lot of times they they don't you know think through, through things clearly, but a lot of times they're crafty enough to figure out how to get in and get your stuff. So one of the things that uh, one of our sponsors is a, a company called Simply Safe, uh, which you probably heard of them before. And the main thing, their arsenal is cameras and sensors. That you, you know. can do that the average person can do. Exactly. Even me. Right. Yeah, even Jay. So, and we've talked about his technical skills yeah. much on the show. Yeah, you don't have to have some uh, you know person come in and do it. You put them up yourself, which is really great. Uh, it takes less than an hour to put all your cameras up. Fifteen dollars a month, uh, which is great. So uh, they really got a, a long history of being a really good company. So if you want to check them out, simplysafe.com slash unashamed. Uh, you get a free HD camera because you're an unashamed listener, which is awesome. So you get a free camera if you go and check them out. That's simply s i m p l i safe dot com slash unashamed. So you're right though about. Uh, gumbo is an African dish, you know, because gumbo means in, in one African it's language, African, it means uh, French, okra. Uh, just a melting pot there of a <laughs> lot of good individuals, uh, meals came together, mm. and they've just made an art form well, out of Well, you remember, it. I mean, New Orleans. Old folks and uh, New Orleans and all is a them, they can city. Really cook. Think about all the people. Emery, that, uh, who was that old guy, Emery? Uh, Emerald. 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 He's a bam. Yeah. Bam. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's what made him famous. He's good. Yeah. Boats is good too. So that's why you can't be overdo the bam on the jambalaya because you you can make it where it's too much seasoning. So I, no, yours is not. I I would personally like it. A, I like heat. You can kick I, it up. I, I like it a little hotter. You I'd probably use the hot sausage and just leave it at that. You could do that because yeah, you don't do too much. Well, it's like when you eat. My wife when she makes beans and rice and we make the jalapeno cornbread. Well, people eat it. You know they they start sweating. Your mother, like, your mother, has has see if I follow her instructions or not. But she has said, "Why don't you just maybe instead of kicking it up, just bring it down a notch. Bring bring it on down the jambalaya. Right? On the jambalaya, bring well, it down a notch." Well, she can't eat spicy foods though. She's got oh, all yeah. her stomach problems. Okay. Yeah, all that yeah stuff. that's right. So the good news is for the people that uh, have have in the woods, uh, which you can get by going to blazetv.com slash unashamed. If you use Jace or or Phil, uh, you actually did this on that show. So, oh, you could, yeah, well, you can watch what you just described oh, good night. on In the Woods with Phil. But at the same time, I, I enjoyed just the description of it. I did, the, 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 the specificity well, of we, the bowl and the I don't know whether the computer guy here, Jace, I don't know whether Jace, the computer man, and looking at the treasure out there, but the <laughs> I don't know whether he can actually go in the kitchen. And and do this for two uh -oh. hours. Oh, you'd be surprised. I, I, I take right. that as a, I take that as a challenge, Jace. Well, I, I, I can cook. Get on the jambalaya, Jace. Well, I just I love it so much. I think. Well, I thought it took longer. Two hours. What's that? That's nothing. Yeah, it, the biggest work is the prep. Really, I the mean, prep. the prep is the main. That takes the. Plus, time. I may put my signature uh, on it. 
I mean, yeah. it's it's like what we did with the cornbread. We took y'all's little crunchy. You've got a lot y'all. of leeway. You've got a lot of <laughs> options. You can you can say okay. Y'all got uh, y'all's cornbread. Instead of chicken, what about rabbit? Instead of rabbit, what about squirrel? Instead of squirrel, what about deer? I've seen I mean, Boston. I'm budding. just saying I did yeah. it with chicken, but you can you can have any kind of meat you want. Have in you there. tried it with deer? I haven't tried it, but I think it would be great. Or a little little. But if you got some deer. of those that that deer sausage that. You know, the J and they made that would be. I sure. think that's what's good about it. You but I will creative. say this: you get creative. When you added the shrimp, of course, there's. You start off with bacon. I'm in. It's rice. Love it. Yep. And then you add shrimp. Well, that, that to me, those three factors is guaranteeing success. Everything right. else is just a supporting cast. <laughs> it's good thinking. Yeah, Stone, uh, he made one with Dad's recipe, and it was really good. Yeah, he said, he, he I, did went, I went through the hole, he watched me. Oh, yeah. And he said, boy, do I have to go this same pattern? I said, you got to, it's a <laughs> sequence of events. Yeah. But if you get out of line on that, you look, the first but, two or three I made, you know, just remember I couldn't, oh, eat. Back to I, the couldn't dogs. Eat. I couldn't eat it. <laughs> so to the dogs. To the dogs. The dogs yeah. didn't want any of it. I just don't. If like you don't eat it, and the dogs don't eat it, start all over. <laughs> I know you, you've told me that every day for the last twenty years. I just, I do think you got to have thick skin when you're going to cook. You do. You, that's the prerequisite. Don't start cooking. A lot of people may be listening. They just eat out. <laughs> And yeah, you say, I've been want, wanting to get into must, cooking. Must be critiqued. You've got to have thick skin. That's yeah. the only way to get. Back. Well, That's and right. and with well, and with Robertson's, it's also, you know, we're not a compassionate people by nature. I mean, we love people, but like to each other. The other day, Zach called me. He was like, you know, when you had gotten tested for coronavirus. And he was like, man, that's something about Phil getting tested. I was like, yeah, I know. I said, we, I mean, he, dad's the engine of everything we're doing here. We got to keep, keep him propped up, keep him healthy. I just went into uh, the business relationship yeah. and Zach said, oh yeah. And it's also your dad and we don't want him to get sick. And I was like, oh yeah, that too. I mean, but as what? many people as I'm <laughs> baptizing every week, which, you know, <laughs> you're in a pool of water. Maybe if you took someone who has it and if you push them under the water, they say, wash your hands. Well, you got an individual, and we're washing the whole thing. I would just think. I think y'all are thinking way too much. What I was going to say. God raised a dead man. I said. I, think I wonder what Dr. Some, Fauci would I think say. he'll cut us some slack on this coronavirus. I wonder what Dr. Fauci would say about that scientific thing. Baptism cures the coronavirus. Well, what I was going to say from a spiritual perspective. It takes you, away when, your sin and guarantees you'll be raised that, from the, the dead. That's the main thing. When you, like, when you think about food. You might, you have two options. You you because you have to eat. That's not an option, or you won't be here long. You have to eat. So or you, you can to you death. can eat, or you can eat well. <laughs> and so what we're into is eating well from a spiritual standpoint. I remember you using hospitality and putting mm-hmm. putting food out as the backdrop for introducing Jesus many times, thousands of times. We do the same thing. What was weird was when my teenage boys, I think I've shared this before, but when they were in high school, we came up with the idea because I wanted to see who they're hanging with, meet their friends. So I said, look, every Wednesday night, we're going to cook for your friends. You know, on the first, the first week, I think there was two, just their best buddies. But then I told Missy, I was like, we will spare no expense. We're, we're going to cook the best stuff we have. We can come up with. I'm talking about steak, fresh fish, deer, whatever. And we're going to have a, you know, five course meal. Because I figured, we're talking to teenagers, they love to eat. I was like, if we make it so good, they'll come. Yeah. And I've guess what? That, Look, I've that exploded. The, that exploded. It, it, it. We were getting sometimes 40 and 50 teenagers over there. Of course, I'd give them a one minute Jesus sermon. And invite because on Wednesday night we we'd go yeah. meet with the brothers. After that, we had, they have a Wednesday night service there. But that's how I got to know all of them. And look, some of those teenagers, you know, my kids got oh went you know went to college and working, but moved away. I'm still friends with some of those guys, you know. And, and from a hunting perspective, you know, I hunt with them. And I mean, so it was it all started with a good meal. And I want to see where my kids. Hospitality is mentioned regularly in the Bible. Practice hospitality well, even, without grumbling. Even the story we're in in John twelve, 
you know, they they were getting together. It said they were having a dinner in Jesus' honor. Of course, it was after Lazarus, you know, after he raised Lazarus from the dead. I mean, if you want to, that'll get you a good dinner. <laughs> and it tends to draw you, a crowd, Yeah, too. you start raising dead bodies, they're like, yeah. what are we going to eat? <laughs> if you think about it, uh, you, well, let's take a break. So a lot of guns are being bought up <laughs> with, because of uh, a lot of different reasons, I think. You know, COVID started it. Then you have this civil unrest. I mean, people, the Second Amendment has never been That's more what powerful. I was going to say. You know? The Second Amendment's a good reason. <laughs> That's exactly right, because we can and we need them. Uh, one of the companies that have uh, been with us a long time uh, is called iTarget. And it's a great idea because a lot of people are buying guns, but then you need to be proficient with your weapon. Uh, and sometimes, especially during COVID, it's hard to get out to a range or something like that. And most people don't live in the woods, Phil. Right. Yeah, in the woods with Phil is rare. You could actually do this in, at the 30 stories up. In That's exactly right, you could, in your apartment. Uh, put your phone in here, basically is the way it works, and then you have these, these laser bullets is what they call them. So you put that in your gun, and then you can do the target, and there's an app on your phone that tells you whether you're hitting your target or not. So, so yeah. you know, this is all muscle memory, you know, as we've learned. Oh, yeah. With, when with I learned pistol. how to shoot, it's all muscle memory technique. Exactly. So uh, check these guys out. Uh, you get 10% off uh, plus free shipping if you use the offer code Phil when you go to I, the letter I, targetpro.com. That's I, targetpro.com, offer code Phil, 10% off and free shipping, uh, and learn how to shoot your pistol better. Think about it, how many times Jesus does, how many times he is at a meal a lot. in the Gospels. A lot. A lot of stuff happens around that table, including when you get, we hadn't gotten, when we get there in John 13, when he has the Last Supper, yeah. which is that last Passover meal he does. Which, what's interesting is that. We have a meal at the university where we meet. We have a meal. You can come in off the street. We don't care where you come from. And they come in there. And look, there's a there's donuts. There's a, sometimes jambalaya. Sometimes uh, Gimber cooks, you know, yep. big pork roast and all that. But we have a, a, a spread there free of charge. People can come in and eat. You don't have to, if they want to leave, let them leave. But, but it, it, food draws people. Oh, and you've that, made that part of it. Especially free food. Yeah. Well, but some yeah. people, look, I know some people, some of my, I was going to say friends. Yeah, they're friends, but, man, this burns me up. They'll go, you know, down at some buffet somewhere because it's half off. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, they're going there because of the price. But remember, Jason. Not because of the food. Practice, or the, or the I don't do practice that. hospitality without grumbling. So if you start saying, I'm, boy, I've never seen food leave like... You just got to remember, it. you're doing it as a good deed. Yep. Let them eat it and throw it out the door, whatever they want to do with it, but just provide it and, well, and, I, I and let it go. A lot of our listeners are, are new believers. I know that from all the emails we get. And one of the things that I remember you did, Dad, when you were a brand new Christian, so you thought, well, you know what? I gotta, I gotta learn the Bible. I gotta get some. Disi- yep. Somebody's got to disciple me, yep. because I don't know, you know, I don't know anything about this. So what you would do is Smith and and Carl Allison and Jim Young, all those guys that knew the Bible, you invited them out and fed them because one thing you could do was yep. fish and y'all you know, hunt. Yep. So you invited those guys out. You would make the food. Preachers, pastors, they they're gonna eat. Yeah, uh, that's one thing that goes with it. You know, yeah. you don't see a lot of skinny pastors, including me. And so you would feed them, and then they would teach you the Bible, all of us. Because you remember, Jason, you remember that? We'd many, sit many times. I mean, we'd just sit and listen, and you would ask well, questions. You would just pepper and, and, with questions. And a lot of things yeah. Phil trained me to do is, uh, you know, we skim money everywhere you could skim it except food. Even down here, of course, you learn when you live off the land, you learn how to cook wild game. It's better. Anyway, I yeah, mean, you right. can't, what we're eating, you can't buy in a store. Right. That's I mean, right. It, it's priceless. There, right. there is no price what I'm fixed to eat. Right. You're just, you, you go take some, catch some crappie and clean them and, and however you cook them, they're going to be 10 times better than any fish you're going to order in a restaurant because right. I just caught this thing. There is zero. Lacking crappies. 
Hard to beat. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And even an op, we talk about Opelousas catfish, which people have asked us about. It's so good because they only eat live fish. You know, people, you say catfish, somebody there, oh, that's catfish are terrible. I said, no, you, you're not eating the right one. But you, you <laughs> use it as a ministry. I mean, a lot of people say, well, I just don't know how to get in the conversation about Jesus. I know how you do it. Invite them over for supper. You put out the best you, you got. And if yep. you can't That's cook, it. you order some lobster or some <laughs> ribeyes yep. and get somebody else to cook it if you can't cook. And guess what? They're coming. Yep. Yep. And then it sets the stage. You know, for for Jesus. And that's the point. But, but if you you, you get out some cans of soup and that's it. Well, they ain't coming back here and ain't coming to Jesus either cuz you're cheapskate. <laughs> you didn't learn how to be hospitable. But I mean, you know, yeah. it, it's it's ridiculous people well, I, how they view money and food. Probably like, one of the reasons people maybe shy away from serving your neighbors free of charge. One, if you just look at it, a couple of hours on a jambalaya, but if you get a spread for 20, 25, 30, 40 people, it's work. Yeah. And, and a lot of people might just, maybe that's why they say, man, I don't know. But remember, Plus, it's expensive because you, you know, be, right. you know, well, yeah. you're not yeah. saying, you know, all right, this, we got this meal here. Everybody leave $5. You're free of charge. Here, yeah. we, this how is, many, if you have to factor that there's in a and gumbo. how you give to the Lord, that's right. do it. Right. You know, I, but, but that's why I'm saying we've talked about that on this podcast a lot, that giving is more than just putting money in a plate that comes by. It's such mm-hmm. a bigger picture than that. And, yeah. and besides, there's another... Generosity pays. There's another ancient principle here. You remember, we've talked about this with Cain and Abel. The very first murder that ever occurred, it, it occurred because one was jealous of the other because mm-hmm. he was willing to first fruit give to God. And you think about that. That goes back to some of the first people it, that lived on the planet. It's a critical point, Al. It really is. Well, it's, even in this story that we're at in John 12, I mean, which a funny thing I thought of, you know, they're having a di- dinner in Jesus' honor because he raised Lazarus from the dead, and Lazarus hasn't eaten in four days. I mean, He's I don't hungry. know if that transitioned, <laughs> but it says he was reclining at the table. I was like, yeah, yeah. I know why. <laughs> yeah, that sucker hadn't eaten in four days. <laughs> He's like, well, past the butter, <laughs> extra <laughs> butter. And rice. But then what I was going to say is then something <laughs> extravagant from a money standpoint, then the then then here... Mary is that, you know, poured out this perfume worth a year's wages. So I'm assuming they ate good. You know, this happened. Because, I mean, you're like, he's resurrecting people. I guarantee you they didn't go get, make sloppy joes. Yeah. <laughs> it just didn't happen. That's right. And then he taught them a lesson about who I am is greater than, of course, Judas. And then Judas ha- griped about it. Well, because he wanted he he think about that money. He was yeah. he, whoa, 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 whoa. Malachi brought this up as far as our way we ought to treat our neighbors. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, well, how do you rob me? You know, how do you rob God? In tithes and offerings. You're under curse, the whole nation of you, because you're robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Not as if he needed food. He just It's a principle. Yep. Uh, test me in this, says the Lord. Now, we're talking about generosity. And he says, the only place in the Bible I know where it says, you can test me in this. And it comes down to how people, whether they're generous to their neighbor or not. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I'll prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land. So if you look at that, you say, boy, God said, test me, you be generous I'll, I'll, I'll fill your burns up, stack them up. Well, Al, you can look at it any way you want to look at it. That's what happened to us. It is. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's take one last break. And you know, I, and I, I think I've said this on the podcast before, one of the principles I noticed, Al, where you put that into practice, and I don't even think you thought about it at the time, you just did it, was when we would catch fish, we didn't have a lot else going on anyway, but when you would catch fish, you would send those fish in because that's how we made money. That's yep. how we paid the bills. And But you always 
carved out, you know, we, I'm keeping this op here for the family. Yep. And so we ate the best. That's in correct. The, in the tub. And That's there was a correct. bunch of fish in there that weren't that good, but you can still sell them. Yep. So when I would take the fish into the fish market and we'd dump them out and, you know, they'd pay us the money. I noticed sometimes I'd be in there when they were eating fish because they were like us. They were in the fish business. Yep. They were eating the scraps. Yeah, they would clean them, but the, I just noticed they were eating the collarbones, collarbones off, of, off of buffalo, buffalo goo, not the ribs. And they I, eating the collarbones, Jason. So I, I watched that process, and I thought to myself, you know, they, you're getting the last fruits, this yeah. family, but we were still getting the first fruits, and we were the, you know, we were kind of down the chain in terms of that. But it's really interesting that that was a first fruit principle. You, what you were saying is. My family comes first. We're going to eat the best. That's what mm-hmm. God says I want. And we you. were selling, by the way, Miss Kay told me one time, from 225 to 250 a week is the money we were making from selling the fish. And right. somebody said, and you actually thought you were going somewhere? <laughs> I said, one day at a time. Right. And then the duck call came, and then the, right. y- you say... It was a very humbling process, is what happened. Because I and the reason I've thinking. But how did you ever hear anybody say, "Boy, we are down and out and poor snakes"? No, nah, I, I, we I ate good. I mean, I yeah, oh, I, lo- I loved did. our life. I mean, you know, we didn't. When when I remember when we started making a little more money and I started seeing what fast food was about, which you know when you're a teenager or whatever, you eat anything, you know. I mean, I mean, I remember me and Willie, we would be digging around for coins to see him. I, I rode with the <laughs> Look, we stopped at the Burger King, and these two, you know, they were like, well, how much money we got here? They're yeah. scrapping around. We got $12. So then they'd start ordering, and then they'd say, how much is that? To the person, it, yep. and they would say, "Oh, you're up to you know seven dollars. Yeah. Okay, give give us two more <laughs> cheeseburgers." <laughs> and, and look, they would take it all the way up. <laughs> what <laughs> I'll just describe sums up five years of me and Willie, right? Because we only had one vehicle, That's and we right. had to share it. I didn't even realize and, that. Oh, I didn't yeah. know you boys were scrounging <laughs> around. No, when we got a little money, but you know, before the only only place I'd ever eaten really was that place. Uh, what was it called? The Dinner Bell or something? It was over on the same side of the track. So, so Jason, the, is it humbling now? Well, that well hold on. Let me tell you this story. It was on the same side of the track as the fish market. Yep. I remember the first time I went in there, I was the only white person in there. It's a very poor person. You said, well, why are you going in there? Because the food was awesome. Yeah. I mean, there was three big old African-American women back here on, on, on a stove. Yeah. And it's you know, turnip food. greens and, you know, oh, yeah. hot pork chops. water, cornbread, and pork, pork chop. Fried, and they just, chop. you know, they gave enough for two people. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I remember taking Missy there one time, and she's like, are you sure about this? I said, am I sure about it? I ate here for like three years. <laughs> I said, it would be the best food you've eaten. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was awesome. There's a new but, one over there called Big Mama's. Yeah. And it's the same deal. It's an old fast food place that she's using, but it's you walk mm-hmm. in there and it's got that soul food smell. It's amazing. She just, oh, but, I know. See, I'd rather go somewhere like that and where it's good food and you're sitting there watching them cook. I used to pick at them. I was like, y'all need to go up because it's cheap. Yeah. Because they're thinking, well, everybody's poor around here eating, but I'm like, oh, they would, I would pay more. <laughs> And back then, I didn't have it. I'd found it because <laughs> it just—it's like eating at your, you know, eating at your kitchen right. or whatever. So, but then we, you know, everybody has this quick and easy, and the fast food just kind of watered down good food. What's the really. commercial? The woman gets a little grub, they ship it to you, and, and you say, "We don't have to cook anymore." <laughs> And it's like a being released from a scourge. They were d- jumping around and dancing. Yeah, and we don't hugging. have to cook anymore. I'm thinking. Yeah. Phil's one of the few people. Here's what happens to me, Phil. When a commercial comes on TV, I tune out. But you you watch them. Oh yeah. He I don't. Them. I just don't. So I mean, I mean, there's a few in between the pundits. I'm I'm at least keeping up with what's going on in our culture. I mean, there and are, by the way, it's capitalism is what makes it work. So it's like the guy that uh, sent me a note from a listener podcast. He said, can y'all just put all the ads at the front so I can fast forward and just go to the podcast? And I was, I was like, well, no, the, they're the I ones that make sure we have a podcast. You know, it's capitalism. They and would I, go for that. You know? <laughs> I think the, our sponsors would not be happy about that at all. No, but food's been a big part, obviously, of our family for the whole time, which was interesting. We started out with a jambalaya, but it was a big part of what you see biblically too. 
I yeah. mean, for a lot of different reasons. No doubt. And so I, I think Jace is right. I think if you think of it in terms of an outreach to help somebody, if you think of it in terms of, you know, being able to share Jesus with them, or like I said in your case, even be discipled. If you'll, if you'll arrange that around a meal, plus it's just hospitality. Yep. You know, having people in your home, making a difference. I mean, it's just it's The world needs more of it. Our culture's gotten away from it for sure. I mean, there was a point in time where nobody ate out. Oh, that's right. And then it kind of, then everybody ate out. It's funny, then the coronavirus hit, then you couldn't eat out. Sure, and yeah. it kind of forced everybody back in. But I've read so many st- stories about families just saying, you know what, this was pretty neat to learn how to cook because we had to, couldn't go out and eat. And so I, I think it may be something that kind of opens the door well, back. Well, might do it. You know, and kind of brings people back, which is really cool, which would be great. Yeah. I well, was, r- wrap us up, Dave. We got well, I was going to bring up in John 12, where was it that he said that, that those were looking for the praise of men instead of the praise of God? Because I was going to make a point. Uh, where was that in? It was in John 12. I thought it was in John 12. Uh, am I wrong? You might be. I, I know. I didn't. Uh, y'all did. No, that's in John. Uh, Where's that? Twelve at? verse 40, 43. That's it. That's it. So what the point I was going to make is, you know, Jesus does this. They have this supper. They he commends Mary for because she got the big picture. Who this is the Son of God, and so the response. You're like everything. It couldn't be going any better. And these Pharisees look around and say, we need to kill him and Lazarus. Yeah. Which is... They should could kill them all. <laughs> kill them all. I don't, we don't like how and this... Poor, what did La- poor Lazarus, all he did was come back. You know, he, he just came back from the dead. He didn't even do anything. He's not even teaching these people. So Jesus gets into the last section of 12, and he says, you know, who is... He quotes this, uh, Isaiah, where it says... He's blinded their eyes and dead in their hearts so that they cannot see. And you did a whole lesson about that, and I, and mm. I think we ought to do a whole podcast about this yep. because it's a very difficult thing for people to understand. It's like, well, wait a minute. What's this saying, that God somehow is keeping them? But there's a process that happens, and at some point he's like, okay. And so, but then he makes this, this statement because a lot of people, when you get back to the food and not wanting to – pay the money and make sacrifices or not. They don't want to introduce Jesus because out of fear or it's uncomfortable. And watch what he says in 42. He says, yet at the same time, many among the leaders believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they would not confess their faith for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue for they loved praise from men more than praise from God. You know, and in my weird mind, that's why I'm bringing this up with the food. A lot of people don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, and they we've well documented this. They'll eat crappy food their whole life because some people, they, they're so after praise, and then the fear of yeah. conflict right. won't allow that. And here I think of all this, you know, Jesus is proven, proven, not claiming, proving that he is the son of God. And they would rather have their own people give them praise than to surrender to this guy. And, and Even though they really believe in him. One of yeah. those girls, she said, I've been a left-wing liberal like you've never seen. She said, Mr. Robinson, I am renouncing the whole thing and giving my life to Jesus. She basically came in and said, I'm turning away. And it's for these kind of people they they would not confess their faith for fear they'd be put out. That whole group has an iron fist on them. You can't you. It, it's our our narrative or to hell with you. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, she was one that says yeah. I am renouncing what I've been doing, and I'm I'm thankful. That's powerful. I've used that. this oh, yeah. line many times in a many a one on one situation when people say I just can't make him happy or I can't make her happy or I'm not happy and I'm. Always, I was like, well, when are you going to worry about making God happy? <laughs> it, it's just not something we think about, but I, that's why I really like It made me this. feel good to look around the other morning, and, and when I saw the two 
the, the, the mother and the daughter and both of them renouncing a false ideology and put their faith in Jesus. And I said, where are y'all from? And they said, New York City. I said, New York City. It's pretty amazing that they would come that far to do that. Yeah. They went from, they went, came from New York to right in North Louisiana. There's been others from that. A lot of them. Some from New Jersey, others that are coming, you yeah. know, as well. So, which is really great. So go make you a jambalaya and invite your neighbors. There you hey. go. That's exactly right. Learn how. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.